Now we're going to talk a little bit more about linear combinations, and so we'll need a little notation to help us along. So this set, script L, square brackets, V1, all the way up to Vm. I'm going to let this denote the set of all linear combinations of my Vs. So in this case, C1 all the way up to Cm, those are real numbers. And I'm just taking all, all possible linear combinations. And so linear independence last time, so we're going to, and let's set V is equal to this so I don't have to keep writing it every single time. So last time, we asked the question, is, or we really answered the question, is V1 up to Vm efficient at representing V? That is, could I remove one of these V's and still represent everything in here, right? And this was answered by linear independence. If this set is linearly independent, then I have the most efficient representation of V. That's great. But now I want to say, for a given space, V, or for another space, W is this collection a sufficient or sufficient to represent W? That is, can I write everything in W as a linear combination of these V's? So this will introduce the notion of spanning. So let's say V is this thing above. Then if L of V1 up to Vm is equal to V, we say that V the Vi's as a collection, span V. And we also say that V1 up to Vm is a spanning set. For V. A quick example, let's take all linear combinations of 1, 0, 0, 1, well that's equal to C1, 1, 0, plus C2, 0, 1, where C1 and C2 range over all real numbers, and that's going to be in turn equal to the set of all vectors C1, C2 of course just by adding these two things together for all real vectors and that's just equal to R2. Well these guys are also linear independent and so that we'll, we'll later see that they form a basis of R2 and this is the canonical basis of R2. So theorem We want to know if our collection V, our collection of Vs, is sufficient to represent a particular vector, right? So that's the, the first goal. So B is in L of V1 all the way up to Vm, if and only if AC is equal to B has a solution. It has at least one solution. Right? And here, of course, 
we're assuming that A is just the matrix, of, matrix obtained by putting all the V's in the columns of A. So it's this, it's this matrix where I've put all the vectors in the columns. So let's do the if direction. So the if direction, well if A C is equal to B has a solution, then of course B is going to be equal to C or A C. And if we expand out that, then we have C1 V1 plus C2 V2 all the way up to Cm Vm. So B is in We'll just write L here. So that covers the if case, only if. So the only if case, well, let's suppose B is in here. Well, if B is in here, then B is equal to C1, V1, plus C2, V2, plus Cm, Vm pretty straightforward proof. And so if we collect all these C's into a vector C, then we have that this is equal to C AC. And that completes the proof. Really simple, right? So B is in here if and only if this matrix has a solution. It was, a, it was almost too easy. But this is, this is a nice theorem to have when we go ahead and show that this collection of vectors spans are in if and only if the rank of A is equal to N. So what's the proof of this? Well, we have that because of this theorem we have that this is equal to Rn if and only if. So L is equal to Rn if and only if. AC equals B has a solution, at least one solution. For all B. And this is true by our fact 7.7 .7, if and only if the rank of A is equal to the rows of A, which is equal to N, which means we're done. Now there's one more kind of interesting fact here is that I have to have at least n vectors to represent Rn. And that theorem is, I mean, it's barely even a theorem. We'll, we'll write it as a theorem for continuity's sake. Well, if L, and I won't write all the vectors again because that's, that's starting to get ridiculous. L uh, is equal to Rn, right? So if this spans Rn, then the number of vectors has to be greater than or equal to n. And the proof is real simple. Well, n is equal to the rank of a by our theorem here, but this is less than or equal to the number of columns of a, which is equal to m. And therefore, therefore, we have this inequality. So we have to have at least n many guys to represent Rn.